You're with RT, good to have your company. At the top of the hour, we'll have more on the unfolding South Ossetian conflict. But right now, the conflict has already claimed the lives of at least 2,000 people and left more than 30,000 displaced, and many of them with no idea what's happened to their families or what will happen next. <laughs> This is genocide of the Ossetian people. We know nothing about our relatives. There's no communication. Just how inhumane and cruel can one be to attack civilians using multi-rocket launch systems? They knew there were people there. It's unheard of. Even I know that it's prohibited. Men here were defending their homeland and their people at the cost of their lives. All my relatives, my mother and two sisters remain in Sinvali. My mother is not transportable due to age. First we heard from them they were alive, but now, 24 hours later, I have no report from them. I'm so worried. There is no water, nothing. How long can one last in the basement? We walked by foot through the mountains. The water was up to our chests, and our young men carried us. It was unbearable, but we made it. The planes are bombing us. I'm sitting here in the basement. Fire is raging above us. Let somebody come and help us. Where are the peacekeepers? I'm sitting here together with other people. My son has been killed. Why nobody comes to save us? We've got people sitting here. My hand hurts a lot after I was shot, but I can't go to hospital because people are shooting outside. There were soldiers and tanks on the streets shooting all night long. I've been hiding 40 people in my bunker. I thought against the Nazis. I was not afraid then, but now I'm very afraid. I have never seen anything like that. We were not prepared. We were in the children's camp when the shooting started. Sixty-five children were among us. We left everything there and rushed away from the camp. Cars couldn't pick everybody up, that's why we had to run. While we were running, Georgian planes opened fire on us. Thankfully, we survived. Thirty-three children were taken by their parents. Others are staying with us. One boy, he saw an elderly woman running with two children, and a tank ran them over. What is this? The contingent was on the move. I was in one of the front cars immediately after the armored personnel vehicle. While crossing an intersection, the shooting started from three sides. While we were defending our position, I was wounded. Mikhail Saakashvili is a fascist and dictator. He massacres civilians. Every night for four days we have been hiding in basements. We can't take it anymore. I've left my husband. He didn't want to leave his house. I want to return, but to where? The shooting is bad. It is impossible to live there. Here's an unexploded bomb made in Georgia. They're bombing civilians. Two women, a mother and daughter, were trying to escape and hide somewhere. They had no basement to hide in, so they were trying to find shelter. But they were killed right away. It's obvious the multi-rocket launch system was used. The heads and legs were torn from the bodies. The war has already begun. U.S. Special Forces Group 5, 1st Battalion, D Company. Deployed on peacekeeping duty to the Republic of Georgia in the Caucasus, this handful of green berets represents the very tip of the spear, the first line of defense. Equipped with the latest battlefield technology and trained in the latest techniques of covert warfare, they strike swiftly, silently, invisibly. They call themselves the Ghosts.
The year is 2008, and the world teeters on the brink of war. Radical ultra-nationalists have seized power in Moscow. Their goal, the re-establishment of the old Soviet Empire. Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan. One by one, the nearby independent republics slip back into the Russian orbit. Russian tanks sit in the Caucasus Mountains and the Baltic forests, poised to strike to the south and east. The world holds its breath and waits. For one small group of elite soldiers, the war has already begun. U.S. Special Forces Group 5, 1st Battalion, D Company. Deployed on peacekeeping duty to the Republic of Georgia in the Caucasus, this handful of Green Berets represents the very tip of the spear, the first line of defense. Equipped with the latest battlefield technology and trained in the latest techniques of covert warfare, they strike swiftly, silently, invisibly. They call themselves the Ghosts. The war has been on for four or five days now. We are already tired. There are lots of bodies over there. Lots of people have been killed, mostly Ossetians, but also Georgians. They had American emblems on the forearms, and they were in black uniforms. Over there, lots of people have been killed, mostly Ossetians, but also Georgians. They had American emblems on the forearms, and they were in black uniforms. The Ossetian president's envoy, Dmitry Medoev, calls Georgia's military actions the ultimate villainy. He says the Georgian army is possibly reinforced by mercenaries, as foreigners have been found among their bodies. The town looks like Stalingrad during World War II, with fallen trees, power lines, burned Georgian tanks all over the street. Dead bodies of Georgian soldiers are lying everywhere. We have information that there were mercenaries among the attackers. In yesterday's most recent tank attack, the advancing tanks were supposedly crewed by Ukrainians. Two unidentified bodies found today are said to be black. Possibly they are Americans, but we can't say for sure yet. We'll be able to publish the official conclusions after carrying out special tests. So upsetting that Sergeant Brown um, went to the bathroom, did a number two during his fight. Um, extremely emotional, extremely powerful. Continuing my conversation now with the president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili. Um, Mr. President, um, and you speak very frankly um, and say things. I was, I was listening to you in the last few minutes, and you, you don't hear a politician speak the way you do in America. Uh, do you believe that um, do you believe that this will end Russia will end if you are dead? Well, um, uh, you know, it's not the fact that I was targeted. My people has been targeted and I couldn't care less whether I was targeted. The worst thing was that I was standing there with my people. They were bombed and I was just targeted like them. And as elected president, official in charge of their protection, I couldn't do anything about it. But the point here is, it's not about me, it's about the idea of freedom. It's you... about the future of the whole region. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. And what I think, it's not about me, it's about the idea of freedom. It's you... about the future of the whole region. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. How come the expression new world order keeps popping up in the strangest places? Coincidence? I think not. Have a look at Mikhail Shasasvili's version of the new world order. On Wednesday, the world witnessed violent clashes in Belize, which sparked much condemnation for the brutal methods used by the police. Georgian policemen and special forces were cruelly beating protesters with fists and batons. At the receiving end of the blows were mostly unarmed people. But it was also a display of power of a different kind. Georgian special forces unveiled their high-tech equipment and used it to disperse the crowds. Sometimes it all looked like a scene from a science fiction movie. Special units clad in state-of-the-art gas masks moved in to pounce on the crowd. Demonstrators were first occupied by special water cannon. Tear gas and rubber bullets were used in the skirmishes shortly. 